Hi, welcome to the Shiko Math Practice Lab, learning through practicing. And uh, we are in the Calculus 1 lecture series, and uh, we are on the topic, the derivative rules and the formulas. So we're going to work on the different formulas, different rules when we try to find the derivative. This is our practice set number four. So in this video, we're going to talk about the derivative formula specifically for the trig functions. And then also we're going to talk about one limit formula related to the trig function. And in this unit, we're not going to show or prove why this limit is true, because we're going to take it as part of the formula, as a given formula. And then if you are interested in seeing why it's true, you can go to the playlist called the Law of Petal's Rule playlist. Then in there, you will see, oh, the proof of this is quite simple here. Okay, so let's take a look, go through, see what type of the sense will be covered here. So like first we talk about, we're going to take a look, the six trig functions, all right? And this is the, the you know, this is the limit function. We say we're going to take it as a given formula right now. And then we're going to be able to prove it, you know, when we go to the local petals rules, so when we talk about that. Okay, so as always, the first six questions are the very mechanical questions, and we're going to practice how to apply the formulas, the, you know, the formula we already learned about the product rule, portion rule, and then we're going to learn the trick formulas here. After the six uh, mechanical practicing, we're going to talk about uh, is the true kind of application problems, uh, and how do we do that? Then the last six problems here, we're going to practice how do we use the formulas about the limits for the trig functions to solving those limits issues here. Okay, so now let's go to the, you know, the let's go to the worksheets and we can start to work. And um, so for the formulas here, okay, so first things here, like I said, uh, those are the six formula we just need to remember. Then for here, you know, for the limits here, we need to one thing here, be careful. We said we're going to take for granted that this is kind of the formula is given. We're not going to prove it. But the one thing we need to be very careful. So in here, this is the theta, all right? So this two has to match here, all right? So if this is x squared, then here it has to be x squared. If this is a 4x, then the bottom has to be 4x. Then the whole thing here has to be approached to zeros here, right? So the theta is equal to zero. So like all the problems here we're going to practice is just like how about if they have different values, you know, how about if they have different values like inside the sine functions, how do we do that? Okay, so now let's take a look you know, the, our first set of the six very mechanical problems, how do we find it? Okay, so let's go ahead and, uh, you know, if you like, you might want to put the formula of the trig function derivative formula on the side, then you can, you know, kind of refresh your memory. Okay, now let's take a look at the f prime x here. Okay, so the first things here, as you can see, the first function here, this is x, and the times what cosine x. So you know when you try to do this derivative, what is the first rule we need to use? Hey, we need to use what the product rule, right? So the product rule is you take the derivative of the first one. So x is one. So you hold the second one. So it's cosine x, and then you hold the first one and take the derivative of the second one. So the cosine based on the formula sheets will give you the negative sine x and then plus, what is the tangent here? The tangent will give you the second square x here. So, you know, your final answers here, this will be cosine x minus x sine x plus two second square x here, okay? So it's pretty straightforward. Okay, so now let's take a look at the second one so here, the g prime theta. And uh, as you can see, oh boy, here, this is e theta here, right? And then you have a tangent theta minus theta. So this is what rules again? The product rules, right? 
So the product rule is I take the derivative for the first one. So what is the derivative for the first one? The E theta still will be the self, right? And then hold the second one still. So it's 10 tangent theta minus theta. Then plus you hold the first one, then take the derivative of the second one. So the second one is the yellow one. So what is the tangent theta here? Is the second square theta, right? Now, what is the theta? You take the derivative of theta, it's one, it's minus one here. All right. So now if you want, you can simplify a little bit. So this is E theta tangent theta minus E theta times theta plus E here is theta here. So it's E theta second square theta minus E theta here, right? And uh, so the, like uh, if you want to, so you can kind of the seconds. Okay, so here, okay, so maybe I want to combine a little bit here, here okay? So the, in here, you know, the, I noticed the, by using the trig identities, right? So the trig identity, the second square theta minus one is so what here? This is the tangent square theta. Right, because the change in square theta plus one equal to the second square, right? That's part of the what the trig identity. So I can say this is the e theta and the tangent square theta. Okay, so now you can take the e theta out, factor the e theta out, then you will have a tangent square theta plus a tangent theta minus theta. All right. Okay, so the now let's take a look. The second ones, the third ones here, this is y primes here. Okay, so be careful, it's y prime. Now I have three x squared times sine x and uh, times uh, what? Times the tangent x is here. So now this we're going to use the product rule. That depends on how do you want to break it. I say, okay, this is, I want the first term is x squared. Then the second term is sine x and tangent x. Or if you want, you can get the same answer. You can say the first term is x squared sine x. So that's fine, doesn't matter. Okay, so now I take it up using the product rule, right? So you take the derivative of the first one, so it's 2x. Then you keep the second term still, so it's the sine x tangent x, right? Then you plus, uh, you hold the first term, then you take the derivative of the second term. So what is the second terms here, right? So this is my second terms, right? So the second term is here. Okay, so I, so this is my second term. So you, I applied what rule again? Product rule again, right? So I say, okay, so sine x, the derivative is what? The sine x, the derivative will be the cosine x, then the tangent x, correct? And then, the sine x, now what is the tangent x here? This is the second square x here, okay? And uh, now, if you want, you can just simplify it. Not much we can simplify here. This is a tangent x. And uh, then this is x squared. So I know the cosine times the tangent because tangent is a sine over cosine. So this is a sine x here, right? And then the sine times the second, second is one over cosine. So this is will be the tangent x, second x is here, right? So the reason why I got this here, because the tangent, tangent is equal to what is the sine x over cosine x. So cosine, cosine, you cancel, you get a sine x. Then what is this one here? So the second x, right? So this will be one over cosine x square x. So I give one cosine to sine become tangents here. Well, I think, uh, you know, if you leave us uh, what we had before, your teacher should be okay with that. Okay, so I just, sometimes I just like to simplify it. Uh, and uh, so to a little bit of easier forms here. Okay, so now let's take a look at number four here. Number four, so immediately you see what rule I need to use here, quotient rules, right? So you say, okay, the quotient rule, so I have a two minus the tangent x here, the whole thing square. Okay, so take the derivative up top, so it's one. So one times the whole of the bottom, so tangent x, 
then minus the whole to the top. So the bottom two, what is the true derivative is zero. And the tangent is what is the second square x, right? Okay, so be careful about this negative signs here, right? Okay, so now here this will be two minus the tangent x, the square. So this is a two minus the tangent x. Then I have a negative and negative, so I have a positive x second square x. And uh, I did not see any way I can simplify it, so I'm going to leave it like this. Okay, let's take a look at this one see here. So y prime, okay, so the same way I used the quotient rule. Okay, so what is the quotient rule? I square the bottom first. Okay, so now you want to take the derivative of the top, and the top is a product right, of the two functions. So it's a t and the sine t. So what I need to do see here, I need to take the power rules, right? So power rule, first one, so it's a sine t plus a t cosine t, right? So this is the product rule of the first one, the top one, and times the bottom one plus t, correct? And then minus you hold the top sine t. So the derivative of bottom is one plus t. So what is that? It's one here. Okay. So let's take a look. We can simplify a little bit or not. So this is one plus t to the square. So I foiled it. So I get the sine t and the plus uh, t cosine x cosine t, so I need to be careful, this is t. Okay, and then plus t sine t, and then plus t squared cosine t, and then, then this is a minus t sine t. So I have a, huh, okay, so here I can cancel. Well, let's simplify the little. So here, that's what will give me, this is a one plus t to the square. And then I have a sine t plus a t cosine t plus a t square cosine t. That's right. Okay. All right. So the last one's here. Let's take a look. It's the quotient rule again. Right. So this is y prime. Okay. So quotient rule one more time. What I need to do here? Square the bottom. Okay. Now you hold the button, you take the derivative of the top. So one going to cancel. What is the second? If you go back to the formula, it will be the second x tangent x, here, right? Then the whole thing times the bottom. So it's a tangent x here. Okay, and then minus you hold the top is one minus the second x. Then you take the derivative of out of the bottom. So what is the tangent derivative? It's the second square x. Right. Okay, so now let's see we can simplify this a little bit or not. It doesn't look like. So this will be the negative second x tangent square x, right? And then minus the second square x minus minus is positive. So it will be plus the second cube x. Like I said, the derivative, like I keep mentioning the calculus, if you have a good knowledge about that one, S is pretty, you know, it's pretty easy to do, you know, because the majority is your, you know, algebra, how to combine or make a mistake, and that's what are going to happen here. Okay, so now let's take a look at find the value of X, the F of EX have a horizontal, Tangents, right? So we talk about this tangent line almost every one of it, you know. So okay, so so the horizontal tangent. So tangent line, the slope of the horizontal tangent. So what is the slope going to be equal to? Ha, huh, the slope going to be equal to what? Be equal to zero because it's horizontal, right? So horizontal line is like this. So the slope going to be equal to zero. So what is the slope of a tangent line? It's our first derivative. Okay, so let's take a look at f prime here. So the f prime here, so this is the two functions, right? So I have the ex and I have a cosine x. So what the rule again? Ha, ah, product rule. Okay, so check the derivative of the first one. So ex will be ex by itself, and then this is a cosine x. 
10 plus, right? You hold the first one and take the derivative of the second one. So what is the cosine x? The cosine x is what? Negative sine x is correct. Okay, so now I factored ex out. So this will be the cosine x minus the sine x. So I need to find where I have a horizontal tangency here. So now I know this one, horizontal tangent, that means slope equal to zero. I set equal to zero here. So that means what is the cosine x equal to what? Equal to sine x here. Correct, so that will be the cosine x equal to the sine x here. Okay, so now if you take a look here, if you remember from your, um, so this is my sine functions, right? And uh, this is my cosine functions, right? So I know, so when the sine equal to cosine, where are they going to be equal to? That means they are going to be equal to at the pi over four. So like in here, here. So, every, so that would be the first is the pi over four. And then this is what, five pi over four, right? So I know in general here, the x is going to be equal to pi over four, and then plus k pi, Right, so k is from the zero, one, two, da, 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 da. So let's I know at those places here, right, I'm going to have a what? I'm going to have a horizontal tangents here. Okay, now let's take a look at the next ones here. So let's say we have all this given information and uh, h of x, so the gx is uh, f of x sine x, and uh, h of x uh, is uh, cosine x f of x. So now I'm going to find the g prime. So just like before, g, so the g prime x is the product rule, right? So what I need to do, so take the first derivative, f prime x, hold the second one, sine x, then plus the f x, now, take the derivative of second one. So what is the sine x? It's a cosine x. Now you want to find the g prime pi over three. That means f prime pi over three, sine pi over three, and the plus f pi over three, and the cosine pi over three, right? Okay, so let's looking for the word, looking for the value. f prime pi over three, ha, this is negative two. Okay, you still remember the unit circle? So what is the sine pi over three? The sine pi over three will be what? It's square root of the three over two, correct? Okay, so pi over three, f pi over three, what is f pi over three is four, so four times. So what is the cosine pi over three? Cosine pi over three will be one half here, right? So if you simplify this, it will be negative square root of 3 plus 2. Okay, so now let's take a look at h prime. So first I'm going to find the h derivative. So this is the quotient rule, yes, right? So it's f of x to the square. And then what is here? The whole of the first one, take the top derivative is negative sine x f of x then minus the hold of the top x and then times f prime x, right? So it's the, you know, we did it so many of these type of the problems here. So now the h prime pi over three, so all the x is equal to pi over three. So f of the pi over three, pi over three is the four. So this is the four to the squares, right? So negative sine pi over three, what is the sine pi over the three? is a square root of the three over two. Then f pi over three is a four again, right? So it's a four. Then minus cosine pi over three. What is a cosine pi over three? It's one half, correct? Okay, so then what is f prime pi over three? It's a negative two, all right? So just be careful about the negative signs. So then this is negative, negative, positive, so if you calculate that, 
So you will get this is a 16 and uh, this is a four, so it's a negative two square root of the threes, right? Then this is a negative, negative becomes a positive. Okay. All right, so that's it. So those are the pretty uh, straightforward. It's just basically combined uh, like what we learned before, right? And with the new trig function formulas here. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at this limit. Remember, like I mentioned before, you know, the limits here, the formula. So let me write the formula here, right? So then the formula they tell us is limit theta approach to zero. This is the sine theta and the theta, right? Like we say, the key things is here, right? So this one and this one and this one they have to match here. Okay. So then this one's here, what is the limit here? This limit is once here, okay? So let me give you uh, examples here. So let's take, take a look at this one. This is limit x approach to zero, five x. Okay, so I can say that this is a limit x approach to zero because the here is a five x, right? So I need to have a, 5x on the bottom, so I need to have the 5x, right? And then my bottom original is a 3, 3x. If I put a 5x here, what I need to do here? I need to have a 5 over here to cancel it out, so it will be back to the original 3x, right? Okay, so now in here, you will see here, right? So this one's here. Okay, so this one's here right now. So this is a limit of 5x over 5x, when the x approach to zero, so 5x approach to zero. So based on this formula, what is this one going to approach to? Approach to one. So what is the final answer? Five, sir. All right. Like I said, for right now, we will remember the formulas, right? And then when we talk about a local petals rule, then we can apply to that. So in here, because here, maybe we want to write this one also, because here, this is an x approach to zero, right? Because it's a 5x. So x approach to zero, of course, the 5x also approach to zero, all right? So that's why match exactly all these three terms has to match. Okay. Okay. So now let's take a look at the second one see here. So the second one is here. So this is a limit x approach to zeros, right? Okay, so sine x, so we say the sine x, in order to apply this formula, I need to have x here, correct? And then the sine pi x, I need to have a pi x here, okay? Right, so now I cannot just add anything. So if I put a, a x here, I need to times x to cancel it out, so I will become my original formula. So here, I times 5x, cancel it out. Okay, now you apply. So this is the limit x approach to zero. So what happened to here? This will be equal to what? This will be equal to one, and then this will be equal to what? This will be equal to one, right? Because sine theta, so it's pi x equal to zero, pi x approach to zero. And then in here, the x and the x I can cancel. So what is the final answer of the limit? It's a one over what? It's a one over pi, see here, right? So for all these problems here, we are just try to match these forms here, all right? Okay, so now let's try one more time see here, how do we match this form? So this is the limit x approach to zero. Okay, so this is a sine three x. So I know my bottom has to be three x here, all right? And then this is a sign five x. So I know my bottom has to be five x here. Okay, so now you take a look at your, your bottoms here. This is a three x times five x is a what? It's a 15 x squared, but originally I only have x squared. So what I need to do here, what I need to do to adjust it, I need to times what? I need to times 15, because I cannot change my equation just by adding the constant, right? So if I times three and the five, so I need to have a 15 here to cancel that out. 
Okay, so now apply to the formula. This is 3x, 3x is, is match this formula. So what is this one going to? One. And this one's here, what is this one going to? One. So what is the final answer? It's one. No, it's 15, right? Okay, right? So this one's here is, uh, you know, it's kind of like the, you know, it's interesting, right? Okay, so now this one, the number 12, this one is a little harder, but it's not too bad. Okay, so this one's here. This one, this problem, you know, when you go to the local petals rule module, will be very easy to solve. But right now in here, we only know this limit, okay? So for this one's here, this is a sine theta, and this is a cosine theta minus one. All right, so, I know the formula is only have a sine and the theta, doesn't have a cosine. So one of the things here, I need to kind of get rid of cosine. So what I can do here, I can times the cosine theta plus one and the cosine theta plus one. Let's see the reason why you will see why I want to times the cosine theta plus one. So this button here, this is a sine theta. So this is a cosine theta plus one. So remember what is so the top here, this is a cosine square theta minus one, a square minus b squares, right? Okay, so what is the a square minus b square? I know the cosine and the sine identity is cosine square plus sine square equal to one. Everybody remember this? So we know this is like a sine square x plus a cosine square x equal to one, right? From your trig function, this is trig identities here. So now I know the cosine square minus one. So what happened to here? So this limit theta approach to zero. So this will be equal to negative sine square theta. And this is the sine theta and the cosine theta plus one. So now in here, I can cancel one sign, right? So here, I cancel, so the top will only be negative sine theta. Okay, now you plug the zero over to that. So what is the zero over to this one? You will get a zero, and then cosine zero is what? It's one, so it's two zero. So is it two zero is defined? Oh yes, so what is the answer here? So the limit here is what? It's zero. Get it? Okay, very good. Okay, now let's take a look at number 13. 13 is even interesting. Okay, so I'm going to, okay, so in here, first things here, you look at the inside, this is x minus one. Oh, well, it's pretty good, x approach to one. So it's similar, like you said, is the approach to zeros here, right? Because the, we want the theta approach to zero. So if you let the theta is equal to x minus one, then this one basically change it to the theta approach to zero, right? Now we say we have to match here, right? So this is x minus one, my bottom has to match. So let's take a look at this one, approach to one. So this is a sine x minus one. So like I say, if I have x minus one, I need to match here. Okay, so what uh, I can factor, ha, ah, I can factor. So I can factor, this is x plus two and x minus one. Oh, that is good, right? Okay, so now I can say this is a limit, x approach to one, this is x plus two times the limit, x approach to one, this is a sine x minus one, x minus one. Then as you can see, oh boy, okay. So this is approach to x minus one. This is x minus one, they match. And this one is x approach to one. That means this one, they match to the theta approach to zero, right? If you let this theta, this is theta. Okay, so what, ha so what happened to here? Ha, ah, this is one. Now, the limit x approach to one, one over x plus two. So what is the final answer? One third. It's good. Okay, so now let's take a look at the last one, see here. The last one is the same thing. Oh boy, so inside in here has to be x squared. So in order to use this formula, what I need to do here one more time, I need to have what? x squared. 
right? So I said, okay, so this is x squared. So I have to have x squared. Okay, if you have to have x squared, so we need to adjust. So because so this is x only, you put x squared, what I need to do? Ha, ah, I need to multiply the x, right? So I don't change my original equation. Okay, so now this is good, right? So I say, okay, here, so this thing's here, x squared, so they match. So this one really x approach to zero, that means x squared approach to zero is perfect. So what I have here is one. Okay, so here, now in here, you have here, you will say here, okay, okay so this one's here, you will say this is a limit, x approach to zero, then you have a sign x squared, x squared, and then the times the limit, x approach to zero, x here, right? So this terms here is equal to one. What is this term, limit approach to zero? Ha, ah, it's zero. So what is my final answer? It's zero. That's it, right? So the, so remember right now, right? We just, uh, you know, kind of take this as a part of the given formula. And uh, then, like, uh, if you are interested, you can go to the local patterns rule playlist to see, you know, how to prove this. And then some of those equations, we can use local patterns rule, try to solve it. And it will be kind of the, you know, sometimes easier than just apply to these rules here, okay? And uh, that's it. This is the video number four. We practice the derivative of the trig functions. And as you, you can see, the key things here, try to remember, those derivative formula for your six trig functions. All right. Okay, that's it. And uh, nice to talk to you and uh, hope that you got a pretty good understanding about this topic. Uh, and uh, that's it. Have a good day. I'm looking forward to talk to you to the next very important topic we call the, is the chain rules here. All right. Have a good day and looking forward to talk to you in our next video. Okay, bye.